Uh, welcome, everyone. We're going to be starting in a couple of minutes, but I just wanted to make sure that we could get everybody to, to join and, and hop in. Um, we're going to be talking about generating more leads uh, in the fourth quarter. And so uh, let's give it two more minutes. We'll start promptly at 1 Eastern. All right, everyone, welcome to the webinar, How to Generate More Leads in Q4. Um, this is a really, really relevant topic today, and we're excited to jump right into it. But before we do, um, we're using GoToWebinar for this broadcast. So on the right-hand side of your screen, you'll have a control panel, and you've got a lot of, of gray bars with drop-down triangles, and one of them is questions. So we would encourage you to, as we go throughout the webinar, just go ahead and type your questions in and we'll get to as many of them at the end of the broadcast. Um, a, another thing to keep aware of is um, we're going to be reviewing a bunch of stats and there's going to be a lot of information here. So uh, if you want to uh, uh, you know, replay this webinar to catch up on some things or just or you know, kind of play it for maybe some of the team members who are on the floor trying to sell cars, um, we're going to be sending out the broadcast. Uh, the recording in an email and we'll also have it available on drivingsales.com in the community so that we can get some discussions going there. So um, let's uh, let's introduce the presenter today. Um, it's Michael Farmer. He's the director of Key Accounts and he's been with LPA for over two years within a variety of roles. Um, he started as an account manager and he handed over 400 accounts in the U.S. and Australia. But currently he manages some of the largest groups in the country to ensure they're connected with this ever-changing landscape uh, around digital messaging and the, the new Omni experience and the way that cu customers want to communicate today. So without further ado, I'm going to turn the time over to Michael and let him jump right in. Thank you so much, Bart. Um, good afternoon uh, to everyone on the East Coast. Good morning to everyone on the West Coast. Uh, as Bart said, I am the Director of Key Accounts for Live Person Automotive. I uh, kind of always in this space uh, dealing with dealerships uh, that could be from anywhere from uh, my main key point is about 15 rooftops per dealer group all the way up to some of the largest publicly and privately traded uh, dealer groups in the U.S. Uh, so as we run through today, uh, if you have any questions, as Bart said, feel free to type them in the questions box in the panel on the right hand side. Uh, if your question does not get answered today, don't worry. We will personally follow up with you after the webinar uh, to make sure that any questions that you have do get answered. Uh, so as we run through today, just kind of the agenda is we'll run through, we'll kind of uh, give everyone a quick recap about live person automotive. Uh, we'll talk about the fallout from phone tag. Uh, I know this is a, a pretty sensitive topic for most people. Uh, more qualified lead with messaging, enabling text for your dealership. We have a couple of dealer testimonials in here, and then we will wrap it up with a Q&A session at the end. Uh, so a quick recap about Live Person Automotive. Uh, so our parent company, Live Person, uh, their goal philosophy, and we have adopted this as well, uh, is making life easier by transforming how people communicate with brands. Uh, this is not a, a webinar talking about the big OEMs. This is a webinar talking about your dealership. Your dealership name that's posted out front, that is your brand. So we want to talk to you about how you can actually elevate that. Uh, the company's enterprise solution, which is known as Live Engage, 
uh, actually empowers consumers to stop wasting time on hold with 1-800 numbers uh, and instead actually pull messaging into that uh, arena so they can actually start having communications with their favorite brands uh, just as your family and friends do. So we have more than 18,000 businesses, uh, including some of the largest ones we'll get into in just a second, uh, that rely on our unparalleled intelligence, security, and scalability uh, to reduce cost, increase lifetime value, and create meaningful connections with your customers. So here are some of the brands that we actually uh, you know, give today. A lot of these that you'll see are in the retail space. We do have several OEMs that we deal with, several uh, large dealer groups that we deal with as well. Uh, Live Person has been innovating the digital connections between brands and consumers for over 20 years. Uh, starting with uh, kind of the invention of live chat by our founder and CEO, uh, Rob Lucasio, back in 1995. Uh, since then, we've been driving consumer communication technology through the evolution of predictive intelligence and customer transcript insights. Uh, live person is driving today's new era of messaging, conversational design, and integration of bots and AI into this space. Uh, I know when I just made that comment, a couple of you probably freaked out. Uh, with the bots and the AI, but we will actually get into that and show you uh, how that works and what the, uh, you know, the upside behind that is uh, here in just a couple of minutes. So um, our key point is we know auto. We've been around uh, for several, several years. Most of you have uh, probably dealt with this in some form or fashion in the past. Uh, we are on the verge of taking over 3 million automotive conversations. Uh, this year that will be handled by our live person concierge team uh, in the, the avenues of Toyota, GM, Hyundai, Kia, and a couple more that you can see here on the screen. Uh, also, the chances of interacting with us are fairly high. About 50% or more of the worldwide automotive messages flow through our live person platform. Uh, we are an international company. I do focus on mainly North America but we do have these solutions in UK, Canada, Australia as well. So the enterprise grade technology and compliance that we use uh, has been vetted several times. We have several uh, on-site visits per year, uh, full audit trails, and you can kind of see below uh, some of the certifications that we have. I know one of the biggest ones that we see popping up in the space today is the ADA compliance. Uh, we've seen it come up in the space uh, pretty pretty fast here recently in the last couple months. Uh, so having a solution that is actually fully integrated with that and fully compliant inside of that space uh, is something that will definitely help you uh, increase that relationship with your consumer base. So the simple fact of this is you want to be where your consumers already are. Uh, if anybody on here likes coffee, Trust me, if you put a Starbucks in your kitchen, you'd be there all the time. The reason is, is because it is where you constantly are. So digital messaging is no different. You want to make sure that you are in front of the customer at any given point that you can be while they are in their car shopping journey. So the shift we've seen in this space, and you'll see some of the avenues here that we're, we're in, um, is the shift from analog to digital. Uh, back in 2005, we saw the largest shift go from maps into Google Maps, just being able to pull it up live on your phone, follow the GPS. Uh, 2008, we saw the biggest shift from CDs into streaming audio. 2009, you went from calling a taxi to calling a Uber. And then today, we're actually seeing less phone interactions and more messaging interactions that go on between consumers and brands. So over 90% of our day, today conversations happen in a digital space. Uh, on average, it's 15.2 million texts sent every minute. Uh, I guarantee you there's a couple of people on here that are texting as I'm making this stat right now. Uh, 60 billion messages are sent per day, 2.2 billion Facebook users, and 1.3 billion iOS devices. Uh, I know we're pulling up iOS in here, which are all Apple devices, and we'll get into the reason why that is important uh, here in just a couple seconds. So consumers prefer messaging. This is that shift that we've seen go from telephone to voice. This is what's happening today. So 2002, you can see the stats on how people communicated versus today in 2019. Uh, phone tag is one of the things that 
is probably the worst experience that anyone can ever have. The last thing you want to do is call someone, leave a voicemail, they call you back, you get a voicemail, and it goes back and forth. That actually, the pain of leaving that voicemail could easily translate into the loss of a sale on a vehicle because maybe the voicemail is full and you didn't have an email conversation. So this being able to use this right at the customer's fingertips will allow you to get out of that, you know, just rotating wheel of voicemails and actually getting into the consumer's pocket and having that conversation directly with them. So uh, as we mentioned, only 10% of the conversations are happening on phone right now. If your dealership is banking on that 10%, you're leaving 90% on the table for some other dealer to snatch up and start selling those customers. So messaging simply should fuel your sales department. Uh, it should not be the additive that you put in the tank to boost the MPG to get more vehicles sold that month. It needs to be the actual fuel behind it. 76% uh, of car buyers say they prefer messaging to phone calls. They want that instant communication. They want to be able to communicate with your brand, with your dealership on their schedule, not on yours. 90% of those planning to purchase said they'd be more likely to buy from a business that actually offers a messaging solution. Uh, texts are open and read 98% of the time, uh, five times more than emails, and on average, uh, we see that these conversations are actually read within three minutes of delivery. So the fact that more shoppers know the vehicle they want to buy uh, from the onset is actually limiting the number of models and dealers uh, shopped. Only 2.4 models are considered when buyers first begin visiting dealerships. This also includes the model they actually end up purchasing. So you want to get on that short list quick, fast, and in a hurry because it's critical to your brand it's critical to the sales guy making that deal because the more deals they sell, the better sales guys you're gonna be able to pull in the door, which means the more customers you're gonna come back over and over and over again. So how to get qualified leads with messaging. Uh, so you wanna enable conversations on the most popular website uh, properties out there. Most everybody uh, uses a couple of the big three, Auto Trader, KBB, just to name it. Uh, but they're also, these customers are also looking at your dealership to actually get access in from Google Maps, Google Ads, your Google My Business page that pops up, um, Apple Maps. There's several different ways they're finding out. So you want to get in on those channels so they can just have a conversation right at their fingertips and start messaging. Uh, this is the roadmap to more sales, deeper relationships, and actually a higher CSI. Once they find you there, they pump down into the main messaging channels, your website, Facebook, text, uh, Apple Business Chat, Apple's own certified uh, messaging solution. It happens on any iOS device. That's where that 1.3 billion iOS users comes into play. And then last but not least, the heart of this is actually getting them into your dealership to convert them from a digital communication into driving off the lot in that brand new car. So messaging on your website, this can be a tricky avenue uh, for most. This is where you have several different things uh, that you might have to jump through. So by simply adding messaging to your website, this is what will increase that traffic. Maybe they just have a simple question. Maybe they're in depth. Maybe they have something they can't find on the website. They need your help. You want to be there to help the car shopper through it. This is going to translate into more leads. Uh, if you are a dealer and you have OEM compliances, uh, we're in the month of October, so maybe you want to support a cause. That's not a problem for us. We will come up with an engagement. We have several in our library uh, to actually support it and make this custom to you. You want to be able to relate to your car shoppers in the easiest way possible and by simply just putting something on the website to give them ease of access is the easiest way to do that. So having a couple uh, you know, bullets in the chamber uh, to help the sales process is never a bad thing. Uh, the Kelly Blue Book trade-in evaluation is a simple way of actually kind of answering that question, what's my car worth? Uh, you wanna be able to, to translate that over to the customer. We actually do this inside of a direct uh, integration in there. It slides out from the chat window. The consumer actually gets to fill all of this out and then it gets relayed back into the conversation for the agent at the dealership to see uh, so they can see everything that's in there. 
If you're not a KBB uh, subscriber, don't worry. We haven't left everyone else out. Uh, we actually have the trade pending tool as well. So you, it works the same way. The customer gets to fill it out. Everything gets pumped right back into the conversation. Uh, the agent also actually gets to see uh, the year, make, model, mileage, options, uh, kind of everything that the customer has said that their vehicle is. Uh, now, granted, this doesn't, you know, kind of surpass or uh, supersede getting the vehicle on the lot and doing it there. This is simply uh, just an estimate for the consumer to be able to get a little bit more knowledge uh, on the forefront of those conversations that they're they're having. Now. The biggest, the easiest way every dealership makes money out there is selling your used inventory. You will make more money off of used inventory than you make off of new. There's several reports out there that support that. So what's the easiest way to do that? Be fully transparent with your customers. Give, if they're looking at a used vehicle, offer them up the free Carfax report. You can do it right inside the widget. It slides out to the left. Uh, sending this feature actually allows you instantaneous uh, pull into those. So this is just, a quick you plug in the VIN number it pulls right out of there. Uh, recent studies actually show that providing a Carfax report at the beginning of the car buying experience expedites the process and actually gets cars sold at a higher price point. Uh, I can come in and say uh, you know hey I don't believe you on that but if you give me some some information behind it that supports what you're stating hey now you got something uh, you know in your bank that's worth worth it. So the other thing is, you know, most of you are probably looking at saying, okay, well, this is good. This is, you know, really nice to have this at the beginning of the conversation, but how do I help them through the rest of the journey? You know, finding the car that suits their needs. That's easy. Uh, we actually integrate in with your inventory off your website. This is a real time integration. Uh, you can see everything that's listed there. Uh, if you have a very knowledgeable shopper, you can search your inventory fast and easy by VIN number or stock number. It'll take you right to that vehicle. You can share it with them through the conversation. If your uh, shopper is not quite is uh, honed in on a vehicle, maybe they just have a couple that they want to look at, no worries. We actually give you a filter field that you can go in and do this. So you can select uh, you know, what type of vehicle, what condition, what year, what make model. Uh, the biggest thing that we support inside of here uh, that arms the dealer with something that they actually need to help the customer with is the days on the lot count. So you can actually go in and filter this. So any GM, GSM uh, out there listening to this right now, I know your ears probably just perked up by saying that you can actually uh, you know, tell your guys, hey, here's a quick tool, find the, the car that's been on the, the lot the longest, let's push that out first if it meets their criteria. It's a way that you don't potentially lose money in the end game by sending that car to auction because it's been on your lot for 200 days and there's nothing you can do with it. So that comment I made earlier, be where your customers are. That's just a simple thing. You want to be there in the forefront. So a couple of the avenues we have, Apple Business Chat, Facebook. Um, Apple Business Chat, if you haven't heard of it, actually enables millions of consumers to start a conversation with your dealership directly from Safari, Siri, Spotlight Search, or even the Maps application. These are hard-coded apps that are on every single iOS device out there. Uh, it is a very rich uh, messaging capability. You can see from the example we have on the screen. And it's just an easy way for you to showcase your product inside of Apple's Messages app. It actually is branded for the dealership. So it will have your name, your logo, everything up at the top. Um, on the retail side, this is already being used today. I personally used it uh, with Delta a couple weeks back. Uh, was actually able to get my flight completely rebooked uh, to fly out of another airport due to a delay by the time my Uber driver went past three exits. So it's a very quick, fast way to get in front of the customer and to hone in with them very early. Facebook Messenger and Marketplace. I know everybody in here is probably using this. It's a very crucial tool. Uh, you want to capitalize on that social presence. You're already spending money for Facebook ads. You're spending money for campaigns why not be there to actually answer the questions that get generated off of those? Uh, by doing it through here, you can actually allow uh, your dealership salespeople to answer these conversations, but you don't have to give them access in the messenger. Since it's piped through our system, they're set up to answer off of the website. 
uh, off of Apple Business Chat, Kelly Blue Book, Auto Trader, Facebook, all in this, all inside one uh, screen. So they can hone in on several different channels of conversations right quick um, in the front. So a little stats on these. Most people say, "Oh, well, Facebook. I've had it, had some bad, you know, instances with it in the past." We don't see a whole lot out of it. It just seems like, you know, a bunch of uh, tire clickers, uh, so to speak. So we have a, a East Coast Hyundai dealer. We launched with them one week ago. Uh, inside of one week, we were able to, they were able to, their ads and everything, generate 37 conversations. Us answering fully for them, since we know auto, translated into 25 leads, 20 credit applications were filled out, two cars were sold, and they still have 10 consumers in the pipeline. So you go back and look at those stats and say, oh, well, that's one week in October. Now let's do that the other 52 weeks of the year and actually figure out, hey, what is this going to translate into you? We have another, uh, I have a dealer group that I actually personally support up in the uh, Midwest region that by going through this avenue and posting everything on there, what they actually see from their leads is if we can get someone into the dealership, they have a 65% chance of selling them a vehicle. Now, those are odds. If I told you that I'll give you $2,000 and give you a 65% chance of turning it into $10,000, you are probably going to take those odds pretty quick and see how fast you can get another $2,000 to go back and do it again. This is no different. You want to capitalize on those. Use that ROI that's sitting in front of you and that's, that knowledge to actually get more car shoppers. Google, I don't know of anybody that doesn't use Google in some form or fashion. Uh, whether it be you got just a simple question to ask, you're trying to find something, the hours of a, of a dealership, of a store, that's it. Uh, Google, if you haven't heard already, uh, Google is actually coming out uh, with a form of a solution that will compete with Apple Business Chat. Uh, it's called Google RCS. If you haven't heard about it, I uh, you know, kind of advise you to go look it up, take a look into it. Uh, it is something that we'll see kind of starting to roll out. Um, you know, eventually straight from Google into these several different avenues uh, and will be kind of generated and proposed the same way that Apple is. Third party sites. What does this look like? How does it happen? Uh, where are my customers going to actually get conversations with my dealership? Those are a couple of the, the largest questions we actually have dealers ask us. Auto Trader, it's simple. We put it right below your dealership information. They can chat with you. They can anonymously text with you. They can answer any questions that you might have. Uh, we've actually seen from kind of recent trends in the past that majority of car shoppers now actually go on a third party sites, put on a national filter and actually try to find a vehicle that fits their needs. Uh, it's, it's not against a customer actually getting a car shipped from you know, the West Coast to the East Coast anymore. You know, they're not buying from the backyards anymore. They're trying to find the best deal or the best customer service. Everybody will compete on deal. Not everybody is able to compete on customer service. You've got to be able to compete on that scale. Being in front of the customer where they're at when they're there is the easiest way to capitalize on that area. Uh, Kelly Blue Book, it's the same thing. We have it right there. Contact the dealer, have a question, chat now. They chat, it goes right into your dealership for you to answer. Uh, the Kelly Blue Book lookup feature actually enables the customers, uh, you know, to get an accurate vehicle valuation directly from the conversation. Uh, streamlining sales, trade-ins, uh, and the KBB widget that we saw earlier, you know, once again, it slides out from the web chat window. Uh, it gives you the ability to continue that, to help guide that car shopper uh, through the journey on your website. Uh, remember, this is, you know, when people come in on the digital space, it's a journey. It's not a one way street. You know, they may just have a simple question. You may have to lead them around. The easiest way to do that is have something that's always there and always available for them to ask the question. So our live person advisors, uh, these are our contact centers. So these are the ones that are on point this year to answer three million conversations. So uh, everybody probably his hired a salesperson because they're good at one thing and that is sales. We want to keep it that way. Uh, so our system actually enables what we call a uh, hot transfer. So some conversations are highly valued. Uh, they can move the bottom line. Others are very high level, very generic. 
So our live advisors are actually trained uh, to filter the buyers, filter the high level buyers from the rest of the, the static out there. Uh, we transfer these qualified leads over to you and then your salespeople can do what they do best. They can sell the car. So we've trained and developed hundreds of US based automotive messaging experts uh, that will put your people in front of the car shopper the moment they give off the buying signal. All they have to do is add them to the conversation. That's it. We, we get it. We actually do that qualification for you. We add your sales rep into the conversation and then there you go. It's a warm handoff. You can go back, you can see in the conversation exactly what questions have been asked, maybe what they were looking at on the lot, and then your sales guy is more equipped. They're not having to try to build that rapport from the start. They've let us do that, and now we've given them a warm handoff. So the future, uh, this is the AI that we talked about. Like I said, it's not the big, scary, get stuck in the, the round, round window of sitting and asking for an agent and back and forth. It's simply getting something out front in front of your car shopper to actually make your dealership more efficient. By deploying an AI powered solution on your website, you will actually see uh, efficiencies in the way conversations are routed or handled by your agents increase. They'll be able to handle more conversations at once because the bots will actually allow them to kind of start down that funnel without asking some of those probing questions up in the front. Uh, the display we have in front of you, the example is our integration we have uh, with Hyundai from a tier one standpoint uh, that actually allows people to go and actually use uh, voice to text based. There are bots that are built into this that actually help guide those conversations into the appropriate areas. So a couple testimonials uh, that we kind of go through. So uh, this one is Andine Chevrolet uh, out of North Georgia. So you can kind of read it here on the screen. We have seen uh, several improvements. Uh, their quality of leads went up uh, tremendously, almost overnight uh, when we actually deployed it. The other thing uh, that is very vital behind this testimonial is uh, how heavily uh, you know, everyone kind of relies on reporting. You know, if you have a vendor in front of you and they bring you a report, the first thing you're gonna say is, well, it's your report, I know it favors you, uh, so let me look at it from my side. Let me see what it looks like. Well, you're probably logging into their portal that also supports them and seeing how it looks. We actually will pump everything into Google Analytics for you and you can actually see it there. So based off of your traffic, based off of uh, goals, events, uh, a multitude of several different things, you can actually see what that translates into uh, to move that needle forward for you. So we have another testimonial here um, from Prestige Auto. Uh, so it's just simply that once again. So we have uh, dedicated account managers that will reach out to you constantly to make sure that you are getting the most out of the digital age. We want to make sure your conversations are, uh, you know, very low funnel. The high funnel ones, we want to make sure that there's still the same quality passed over to that. We want to make sure that we can convert those leads for you. So instead of, you know, maybe you're sitting at a 28% web lead conversion right now, we want to see something in that same, that same realm by adding messaging to your site. We want to see those uh, conversions go from that 28% you may be experiencing now to 70% or upwards. Uh, you know, increase your leads, increase your sales. It's that easy. And once we can increase your conversations, then your leads increase, then your sales increase. It's a down trickle effect. We know where we need to deploy at. We are uh, have, I would say, uh, we're definitely on the top end of having the most integrations out there, uh, depending on what it is you use for your dealership, how you want those to look, uh, and where you're at in the country. Uh, you know, there's a couple of regional ones out there that we also have access to that we can plug back into our system. All those conversations come into one screen for the agents to answer. So if you want to text enable your dealership, it's not a, it's not a problem at all. Uh, like I said, we, we will do a Q&A here in just a couple of moments. Uh, if you have a question that does not get answered, don't worry. We will personally follow up with you. 
We will show you what we can do to text enable your site. Um, and not only text enable your site, but text enable your marketing. So if it's billboard marketing, if it's radio ads, TV ads, all of that can be text enabled and be flowed right back into your dealership for your agents to answer, your BDC if you have that set up, or if you want uh, someone like us to actually qualify those leads for you, push them directly into your CRM, and then your sales guys can do what they do best, sell the vehicle. We will gladly uh, set that up and show you how that routing works as well. So Bart, let's go ahead and get into the Q&A session. I know we're a little uh, ahead of schedule, but I have a feeling we're gonna have some pretty uh, good questions that are gonna pop up uh, from a couple of things that we've seen. No, no worries. Thank you for that, Michael. And I don't think, I don't know if ever, anybody's ever complained about uh, things uh, finishing uh, a little out of schedule. So <laughs> I, th I think that's totally fine. Um, I've got some questions for you right here. I'd like to attack, mm -hmm. or not attack, that's not the right way to say it. I'd like to approach the, 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 uh, the structure question from both sides. So, mm -hmm. um, and, and by, by having this hybrid structure that that to define what i define as a hybrid is the dealership can can take over and answer certain portions of the chat or or the ai slash um live person auto can 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 take over certain portions of the chat uh, you, you you're you're like uh straddling this fence so i want to kind of talk about both sides so I, I like what do you say to the dealers um who would say that uh, I want my people in my store answering the questions because they know the inventory and they're closer connected to, to my dealership and, 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 and who I am. Yes. So if you have a, uh, if you are a dealership and you have a very knowledgeable staff base, that's great. We want you to answer those conversations, but what happens when let's say you're in Denver right now, getting hit with a snowstorm. What happens when you got people out shoveling a lot? What happens when you're in Texas and a hailstorm comes up? Everybody goes to do a hail drill. Those are the times where we can actually uh, work as your BDC. We can still keep your digital showroom open 24 seven, but we are there as a insurance policy. We're not, not there to, to take the, the limelight away from you, we're there to act as your insurance policy to make sure that your customers are always taken care of. Now, the other side of the fence that you mentioned, which is, well, what happens if I don't really want my people, you know, taking the time out? They're busy. I don't want them sitting in front of a computer answering these conversations. That's fine. We have the BDC model set up. It's the fully managed model. Um, and the way we look at our relationship with dealers uh, is simply is a dance. It's a tango. It takes two to go back and forth. So we will tango with your staff. We will dance with your staff. We will dance with your customers to actually make sure that everything gets taken care of. We pump all the conversations back over into the CRM. And that way, that's all you have to do is just follow up with the consumer base. So, so then if, if we were to flip it, you kind of got there a little bit, but we were to flip it and we were to say, uh, quite frankly, my, my salespeople, I mean, there's a reason why BDCs exist, right? Salespeople maybe aren't the best at detail at follow up and, and, mm -hmm. and I know I'm stereotyping, but spelling might not be there, some of that kind of stuff. So, so what's the case for having the dealership uh, answer uh, some of these versus have a third party do it 100% of the time? Yeah, so I mean, the dealership is, it's the, it's the, you're there, you're on the lot. Uh, you can use our mobile app, you can walk out, you can put a personal touch. Hey, maybe you want to send over a quick picture of you standing in front of the vehicle. You can easily do that. That is the, the dealership present. I want every dealer that I, I deal with to actually be able to have that direct conversation with the customer very knowledgeable, you know the spec sheet, you know the pricing avenues, uh, you can you know, have those conversations, you can direct them to your finance forms, you can do all of that. But you know, like I mentioned earlier, stuff happens. You need a backup. If you are a BDC, we, op we will operate the same way if you've had a BDC in the past or if you currently use a BDC. 
we can operate the same as your BDC. You can let us know how you want us to answer a conversation. We will literally act just like your BDC to push those leads over to you. So let's flip the question a little bit and, and talk about engagement. Um, that, mm -hmm. To me, that's the new buzzword today, right? Engagement, engagement, engagement. And, and back back when I got started in the car business, it was about building processes, putting stuff, putting stuff in place that was very formal, not formal, um, very structured so that mm -hmm. everybody taught, followed up with customers the same way. And I feel like that we're sophisticated enough now that that's happening. But what, what is now needing to be in, injected into that process is engagement. Um, can you talk to me about some of the, the dealers that are, are really able to engage with customers via messaging and what are, what are some of the, the, the tactics that they're using? Yeah, so the simple thing as far as engaging with the customer, and I do, um, we pretty much our entire company does a training regimen on this uh, called how to handle a digital messaging conversation. And it's simply training your staff on the difference between having a face-to-face -face conversation and having a digital messaging conversation. Uh, we've actually come to kind of see inside the market the way digital has shaped our lives that if you don't answer a digital conversation within that six to nine seconds of initial deployment, uh, it's treated the same as a face-to-face. -face. And if it's not answered in that six to nine seconds, it's viewed as a failure. After nine seconds, you start losing the customer's interest exponentially. So we will train uh, your dealer staff, your BDC on how to actually handle those conversations. It's a back and forth, you know, inside of these conversations. You need to know those fine lines to stick to some of those areas that you can capsize on and actually start building that rapport with the customer. It's no longer the, the old school of, hey, you know, glad you called in today. Let me run these numbers down. I'll email them to you. Nobody wants that. I mean, I couldn't tell you how many unread emails I have in my email box right now um, on my personal email. I don't communicate that way anymore. If I can't have a direct conversation with you and I want to have a conversation with you, then I'm out. But what I'm looking for in return from the brand is that professional, that process that's built into there. But I don't want to feel like it's just a lead generation tool. I want to feel like it's a back and forth. I'm gaining something out of this relationship. And in return for a dealership, what you're gaining out of it is that relationship. And then in turn, that lead information to actually get you closer to that sale. Yeah, you bring up some good points, Michael, because I feel like that if I think of myself as a use case now, I'm, I'm 49. So, you know, I've, I've been around the block a couple of times. But but when I chat with someone, it's usually because I'm in a position to where I cannot carry on a, a, a conversation. Uh, and I want a quick answer, but at the same time, I I, I don't want to, you know, I, I want there to be a little bit of dialogue and back and forth. So it's that it's that balance between getting too crazy with, hey, how's your day? What's going on? Yuck, yuck. And, and not enough of that when you're talking about messaging conversation. Yep. And that's, and that's the thing we've seen is, you know, there's really kind of two reasons that someone, you know, goes car shopping. They want to or they have to. And you need to know how to reply to those. So you need to be able to pick up on that early in the conversation and be able to capitalize on that throughout the conversation. So you're giving the right type of assistance for someone that's in your dealership because they want to buy, you know, let's say the the brand new uh, 2019 truck that just hit the lot. You know, they just want to buy it. That's all they've ever wanted their entire life versus the same customer you have sitting in your showroom and they need to buy a vehicle because the one they've had for 15 years, you know, just slung a rod in the engine, it's going to cost too much to repair. It's just cheaper to buy a new vehicle. Those two customers have to be treated very differently. and You have to know what that process looks like in order to treat those. Now, they're going to reach out to your dealership in the way that they want to reach out to and 90 percent of the time from we see from our conversations is they're going to do that in a digital form so you need to know how to answer those conversations handle those conversations in the digital form because in person you can read uh body body language inside of those conversations so a couple things that just came out of the, the driving sales executive summit we just got back from first of all 
uh, I, I interviewed, we had, we had two keynote speakers uh, talk a lot about SEO and, and search and, and that how Google My Business needs to be an, another dealership website today. Like if it's on Google My Business, it, I mean, if it's on your website as a value prop or as 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 uh, uh, you know, as an offering, it needs to be on Google My Business. And you touched on this a little bit, but the power of having uh, you know messaging come from from that platform. Can, can we talk a little bit about about Google My Business and 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 what you're seeing uh, from from LPA as far as uh, some of the conversion? Just not even on the dealer's website, but it's coming from this third party. Yeah. So I mean, from the third party, we. Um, you know, inside of those, it's a lot, we get a lot of the questions of, you know, hey, how late is a dealership open today? Or, hey, I'm on my way over there. I saw this vehicle online. Uh, I'll be there in 30 minutes. Can I, can I test drive it? Like, those are the conversations we see come in. They're either super high level because they're on the way to your dealership. Maybe they've already honed in on the vehicle they look, they want to look at, or they've already had a conversation with you. Or, they're actually on the way there because they just happen to stumble upon something and they want to just come in and test drive it. So those conversations are very crucial because just because they come in on that avenue and they ask that question, hey, how late are you open today? Doesn't mean that they're not going to circle back into your website, look at your inventory and start asking questions there. Uh, we've actually seen that most of the time when someone buys a vehicle, they've already chatted in with the dealership three or four times done just a couple small questions and now they're looking to actually capital capitalize on that uh, and get a lot of that in that intel so maybe the finance forms and you know the gap insurance and other things that you know dealership really you know kind of makes their money off of capitalize on those and start asking those questions another thing that we've seen inside of google my business in particular is a lot of the uh, dealerships that may have a detached service center uh, we've actually started seeing them going in and building uh, google my business profiles for those service centers so this is you know kind of the money maker in any dealership it's a constant you know feed inside of the dealership and you always want to keep those base full the more you the more you you pack your base out the more money you're going to make at the end of the day so by seeing that that's actually something that digital messaging is coming into play uh, there as well um, we do have a solution for that. Uh, it's not, you know, unfortunately, it's not what we're talking about today, but it is still a texting solution that actually is integrated right in with the service department and runs off of ROs. Uh, so it constantly keeps you in touch with your customer. Uh, we'll increase RO approval rates, uh, dollars per RO, service RO CSI. It will increase all of that uh, with direct integrations into your DMS. So if anyone is, is interested about that, when we follow up with you, just let us know. We'd be more than happy to set some time aside with you to talk about that as well. Well, that, that's a good segue, I guess, to the last, the last topic that, that just came out of, of DSES, which is, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call it the Omni, I don't know, Omni experience. It's, like we, it, we, it's bigger than digital retailing. It's bigger than, than omni-channel retailing. It's... You know, customers today, they don't look at you as an online business and an offline business. Um, and if you think about the, the, the leaders in this segment, you're, you're, you're just a business that's providing different ways for customers to purchase or lease or service uh, or get their questions answered. So um, I love that, that you're, you're talking about some of the, the consistencies that they need to take place from, from different platforms and from online to offline etc you know and messaging really fits into this because I, I it doesn't matter if i'm at the store i'm not at the store i can get that same stuff done and get those questions answered uh, and, and, and conduct business or transact with the dealership regardless of where i am mm -hmm. yep and that's the that's kind of one of the things we've seen creep up in the market um you know a couple years ago digital retailing was you know the hype word and you know, in some in some avenues, it still is. Uh, but what everyone is really wanting to see is they're wanting to see that professionalism carry over. They want that that ability to instantly ask that question. You know, hey, I need help with this form. I, you know, what am I looking at here? What do I need to put in this box? What do I need to put in that box? So by having 
you know, messaging incorporated into all of those avenues of your, you know, your digital showroom actually allows that customer to work through that process at the speed they want to and when they want to. Um, you know, some, for some of the areas in the country, uh, you know, DC in particular with all the different government buildings and military and shift work and everything like that. What happens when the person, you know, comes into your digital showroom that just got off work at 2 a.m. in the morning and has a question to ask? They can't walk into your dealership. So by being able to actually access that digital showroom and ask those questions to someone that's, you know, essentially sitting there waiting on it, that is the level of service that that customer will be able to get nowhere else uh, at 2 a.m. in the morning. Yeah, great stuff, great stuff. Um, I appreciate the time, Michael, and everyone, I appreciate you joining us on this webinar. We'll make this available for everyone so that you can go back and take a look at it. It will be also in the driving sales community uh, so we can get some conversations going. Um, you know, messaging really fits into a lot of this stuff. And so we really appreciate your time and, and taking the, uh, you know, taking a few minutes out of your schedule to talk to us. Uh, uh, do you have any, any parting uh, comments or anything that you, uh, you feel like you didn't get covered? Uh, no, everything, like I said, we will follow up with everyone personally. If you have any questions um, or you want to see how something would look for your actual dealership, let us know when we follow up with you personally. Uh, I will be actually reaching out to uh, customers myself. So if you you know pick up the phone and you hear me on the other end, don't be surprised. Uh, this is what I do every single day. Uh, so the only thing I can say is to everyone on here is, do what you can to you know finish out q4 strong i know um you know we're in kind of one of the the slump months of the year so we want to finish it out strong but you don't want to ignore those customers that are looking to have a conversation with you on their time and in their fashion right well thank you so much um everyone thank you for joining us on this webinar uh and uh let's continue the conversation we hope to see you on other driving sales webinars thank you